the, the thing that you mentioned there about how difficult it is to take time away, I think it just points to, I think it just points to the, uh, the fact that discernment is supposed to take place in the context of you know, like your normal living your faith. Yeah. You know, so like normally you should be taking time out of each day to spend with God. Yeah. Whatever you're doing, whether you're a student in university, whether you're uh, in secondary school still, whether you're married or priest, everybody should be taking a certain amount of time every day to give to God or and every week. And then maybe uh, something a little bit more stan- substantial, you know, on a, a more infrequent basis, you know, once a month or some times a year or something. But uh, the d- discernment does, it has to happen within the context of like a normal like your normal life of faith, basically. It's, you're living your life of faith. You're trying to grow in virtue. You're trying to grow in holiness. You're being faithful to what God has asked of you in your current state of life. Again, whether that's a student or married or single and you're working or whatever it is that you're doing, uh, to be faithful to those things that God has asked you to do. Discernment is simply, okay, taking a period of time and now turning your attention towards some question that is now... Uh, kind of, uh, it's confronting you. Some decision has to be made and now you have to discern. And so, yes, normally uh, it takes place in the context of your normal prayer life uh, where there should be that silence and that time where you spend with God. Uh, And then this time of discernment is uh, almost a, a special season that you enter into when you're confronted with some decision that has to be made. Can I ask you, I know this is, probably uh, 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 this, is, this is quite a personal question can you explain how your discernment process going towards priesthood um what that was like what were the what were the various stages of that because i know there's um I, I know there's probably so many people listening both maybe young people who are young lads who might be discerning priesthood but like these stages that you're saying is this is obviously not just for priests. This, these are these are how you discern. But um, I know I know it's a it, it can be an area that a lot of people have questions on, but just maybe not necessarily know how to do. Right. Uh, I think my uh, my story would be a great maybe uh, the way to describe it would be how not to discern. All right. Uh, <laughs> listen and learn from me. Sit back, you know, and take notes. This is how not to discern. Um, okay. I. <laughs> I think my my sense, this is my sense, is that people tend towards one or two, uh, uh, let's say, one or two uh, attitudes or dispositions. The first is an impulsivity, where you're you don't take a lot of time to make decisions. You just sort of act. You just sort of go and do, and there's not a lot of reflection there. And then the other kind of uh, on the other end of the spectrum is where the people, where, where someone analyzes and analyzes and analyzes and never makes a decision. They're paralyzed, basically. Uh, and again, maybe fear is, is kind of a profound uh, experience for them there uh, as well. So if I was to characterize myself young as a, you know, as a younger man in high school, just before I entered seminary, it was definitely the impulsive. I was the guy who was just like, oh, all right, well, I've give this a shot or give this a shot. And I, I, I didn't uh, take an awful lot of time to sit back and think about the direction my life was going in, where I wanted to, where I wanted to, to go, um, et cetera. So that said, this should be like a, a, a beautiful reason to have confidence in God, right? Because even though I was not doing it correctly, I mean, I was, I was really, I really didn't know what I was doing. All the same, God worked with what he had. God worked with me. And God didn't, you know, God didn't sort of, uh, God doesn't have his will set for us in his mind. And uh, if we don't proceed or along the path that he has kind of laid out for us, he sort of cuts us loose and abandons us. Not so. Uh, God is forever working within us and with the decisions that we make. And my story is a great example of that. I discovered my vocation uh, without an awful lot of uh, reflection and careful thought on my part, a lot of cooperation. Uh, If you do bring those things to the table, 
you're going to have a much easier time of it. Right. Yeah. So anyway, I, 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 I went to seminary very, I had a, a an experience uh, just after prayer where the possibility of priesthood was presented to me. And I, I found strangely myself drawn to the idea of priesthood, of serving as a priest, of being a priest. And that was so strange for me because I was not living my faith with integrity. I was dating a girl that I really liked. We, I mean, we got along really well and we were quite happy in our in dating in, in high school. And I knew all the, the sacrifices that a priest would make and I had no interest in that. And yet <laughs> when I was confronted with the possibility of priesthood, strange, it was so strange. I remember thinking, this was the thought, I could see myself doing that. Wow. And then the run began. <laughs> I started to race away from that possibility because again, I, I, it sort of, I didn't want the, the sacrifice. I didn't want the, uh, all that it meant to be a priest laying down your life. Uh, I was, I wasn't, I didn't have the maturity or the, you know, the, the, the wisdom, the generosity of, of spirit, you know, for that. Mm. Uh, but again, God sort of persisted with me, uh, this, this attraction, inexplicable as it was for me, uh, was lingering and it, I, I couldn't set it aside. It was, it was uh, really unsettling. And I knew that I had to look at this a little bit more carefully. And so then what I did was, and this is a good idea, I talked to somebody about it. This is really important. You don't, you don't have to sort of uh, weigh these things up alone and without help. Uh, when you're discerning, St. Ignatius actually talks about this. St. Ignatius of Loyola is one of the great spiritual masters of the church, and he has a lot to say about discernment. But St. Ignatius says that discernment should never be done without a spiritual director, without someone who's more experienced in the spiritual life, who you can bounce things off of, you can talk through things with, you can, mm -hmm. uh, you go through this with someone, with someone supporting you. And that's what I did. I, I went to someone and I started to ask questions about seminary and priesthood. And uh, I found it very helpful. Uh, and it sort of, uh, it put my mind at ease. It put a lot of my fears that I did have, the things that I was so anxious about, it put a lot of those things to rest. And it helped me to uh, have more freedom to say yes to God and yes to this possibility of, of, of priesthood by going to seminary. So I really grew in freedom and uh, my ability to to make a, a good decision, basically, by that's, asking, by talking to someone. That's fantastic. There was, I just want to go back to something you, you, you said there earlier, and it's, um, it, it, it was a very interesting point, and it's something I've, um, you know, I've, I've heard people speak about before, where they say, you know, what, well, God's plan, God may have a plan for you uh, in life. Uh, and he, he has a, 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 a path traced out for you, but, you know, through the gift of, of free will you've chosen something completely different and you've gone wayward in your life um and next thing it's when you're the furthest away or whatever next thing you realize uh oh i actually see where i've gone wrong and this is not where god wants me but what do i do now he has cut me off but is the point that you're saying is you know like god works with our decisions he absolutely does he very much works with our decisions and even you know even our poor decisions like the things that are less than ideal and even our wrong decisions, even objectively bad decisions. It's funny. God can still use that. Like his, his goodness is such that he can bring good even out of wrong decisions, really yeah. foolish things that we do. That's my experience in my own life. And we know that to be true. That's how God's goodness is. So, and yes, he doesn't cut us off and it, you know, so it's not as though you need to sort of solve a puzzle you know, the, the riddle of God's will for you. And uh, if you don't, maybe this unspoken, uh, unarticulated fear is there that if I don't, if I mess this up, then my life is ruined. Yeah. No, that's, that is not the case. You know, God, uh, God wants you to be happy. He wants you to, uh, to live a good and like a, a substantial life. Uh, but even if you make less than ideal decisions, 
God will not abandon you. He'll work with what you, with what you give him. That said, it's good to, uh, to use the wisdom that is ours as Catholics that's been handed down to us. We know an awful lot about discernment, about how to discover God's will for you, how to make good decisions. So we would do well to take those things on board yeah. so as to uh, cooperate with what God wants, you know, yeah. which is our holiness again and our, uh, to live life to the full. If you liked what you just saw and would like to see the full interview, click on the watch more box above or else click on the link in the description box below. Make sure to also click on the subscribe button above so as to receive more regular content. Thank you.